introducing the Microsoft Access Work Order Seminar brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Now, while the title of this seminar is the Work Order Seminar, it's much more than that. Our goal today is to build a complete database to run an entire service-oriented business. Many of my previous database classes have been designed for retail type businesses. So in today's seminar, I'm going to show you how to build a database to run a service business. Today's seminar will cover tracking customers. Those customers might have multiple locations, like different office buildings, and we'll track the different units inside each location. So for example, if you're dealing with an apartment complex, the customer might have multiple apartments, and you can track each unit inside each apartment complex. We'll create service work orders. We'll track labor and materials for each work order, as well as the costs associated with your labor and materials, so you can track the profit and loss. We'll schedule workers, whether those workers are contractors or employees. And of course, we'll handle all the invoicing and billing. So as you can see, we cover pretty much everything that a small service-oriented business needs to run efficiently. We'll begin, of course, by planning our database. We'll determine all the different tables, queries, forms, and reports that we're going to need. Next, we'll design our customers, locations, and unit tables and forms. What does this mean? Well, basically, we'll have a list of customers. Here are our customers. I can double click to open up any one of these customers. And now each customer can have multiple locations. This ABC Properties, for example, owns UX North Campus and UX South Campus. I can furthermore double click on one of their campuses here. That'll open up that location, and each location can have its own contact name and phone number and address. And you can see all the different units inside of that location, the chem lab, the physics lab, etc., based on room numbers. Open up one of these, and now you can see the details on that specific unit. This is great for the service company who services large corporations that have multiple offices or apartment complexes or any kind of situation where you have customers that have multiple addresses or locations. Then we'll create the work order form so we can enter in work orders for each of our customers based on their location or even their unit. Here's our work order form. You can see it tracks the customer, the location, the unit. You can have a status and a priority. Of course, descriptions and notes. Each work order can have its own contact information. We'll track whether or not it's billable, whether it's been scheduled and invoiced. A work order can fall into multiple categories. So we can track what types of work are necessary for a specific job. This work order, for example, requires plumbing and electrical work. And you can have as many categories as you want. We'll track labor and materials. And of course, be able to print the work order. There's the printed version of the work order. Each work order will track labor and materials. So we can generate a total sale price, cost, and profit for each job. Tracking labor is easy. Just click on the labor button. The labor form appears. You can track the start time, the end time. It'll calculate the number of hours worked. You can put in the worker, the description, notes, and whatever other information you want. Materials work pretty much the same way. You can track the product, the quantity, the unit price, and the unit cost. The system will calculate the totals for you. And if you want to add a new product, we'll have a database of products you can just pick from and then hit Add Product and it will automatically be added to your materials tracking. And of course, your totals will be updated when you return to the work order form. When it's time to create a new work order, all you have to do is open up a customer, and you can create the new work order based on the customer, or open up a location and create the work order based on the location, or even based on the unit. And when I click on the Create Work Order button, all of that information is filled in for me automatically. 
we will develop a comprehensive work order list showing all of our work orders. On this list, of course, we'll be able to double click on a work order to open it. We'll learn how to use triple state checkboxes. So I can come up here and say, show me all of the invoiced work orders or all of the not invoiced work orders or all of them. We can add those kinds of checkbox fields to any of the columns. We'll be able to filter the list between two dates. For example, if I want to see all the work orders between 4-5 and 4-6, we can do that. We'll make some shortcut links over here to show all the open, unscheduled, completed, not invoiced work orders, or print all the open work orders between the dates shown. And there's our printed work order. We will learn how to schedule appointments for all of our work orders, whether for contractors or for employees. From my work order list, I can say, show me all of the open, unscheduled work orders. Open one of them up. And then come down here and click on the Schedule button. I can then pick a worker, like JK Handyman Service. Down here on the bottom, I'll see all of the upcoming appointments for JK Handyman Service, so I don't double book him somewhere. And, and you'll like this, I can click on the Next Available Appointment button, and it will automatically fill in his next appointment time. Now I've defined appointment times as Monday through Friday from 9 to 4 p.m. It's currently 4.21 at 5.30 p.m., so his next available appointment would be tomorrow, 4.22 at 9 a.m., and the system can figure this out. Then you can print the schedule, either for all workers between two dates or just the current worker. And then that worker's schedule prints out. We will make a comprehensive search form for our database so we can look customers up based on different criteria. You can search by company name by typing in any part of the company name. Let's say LMN if you're looking for LMNOP Corp. Hit go. That will then open up the customer's record. But let's say the West Village Apartments calls and you don't know what company they belong to. Well, just type in West Village or just West and then hit go for the location and that will bring up the location and here we can see oh they're part of the XYZ apartments company I can double click on this field to go back to their customer record so as you can see everything is related to everything else likewise we have a big long list of all the different people in the database down here you might have people associated with companies locations units you can search by first name last name or phone number for example if I put a W in the first name and hit go it finds me all the first names that contain a W I could further filter the list by looking for Smith's I'll put SMI for last name and hit go and there now I find all the first names that contain a W that have last names with SMI in them and you can do the same thing with phone number We'll learn how to process the billing for our work orders. From my work order list, I can say, OK, show me all the completed work orders that are not invoiced yet by clicking on that link. Here I can see the one work order that hasn't been billed yet. I can open it up by double clicking on it and then come down and click on the Make Invoice button. All of the information from the work order, the labor, the hours, the materials, are all transferred over to the invoice automatically with a little bit of VB code. And then I can click on the Print Invoice button. And there's my invoice. And likewise, from my main menu, I can click on the Invoice List button and generate a listing of all the different invoices in the system. So that, in a nutshell, is what's covered in this database. As you can see, the seminar is quite comprehensive. For more information on the Access Work Order Seminar, visit my website at accesslearningzone.com and look for the Work Order Seminar. You'll find a complete listing of all the topics covered and a sample database you can download.